So if you start thinking broader, if you start thinking bigger beyond just your local area, number one, maximizing the opportunity that's in your current area. But then once you feel like you're doing a good job of that, how many other people want to be able to do the same thing in their area? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, This is a very, very, very special episode because not only is this episode 150, but this is coming out on New Year's Day. And on New Year's Day, well, not necessarily New Year's Day. Most people are hungover on New Year's Day and really not thinking about anything for the next year. But the start of a new year is always the start of new goals, new activities, new benchmarks, new quotas, new ideas, new, 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 new. So in the sake of something new, I wanted to bring back an old topic, but give it a new twist. And I think in doing so, I may expand your thinking around your business, especially for those of you that are in sales and can expand your mindset on what's possible if you really, really dig in this into this idea of riches in niches. So maybe we'll call this one riches and niches part two or 2.0. I just got off a podcast called the massive agent podcast and primarily for real estate agents, but you know, really all salespeople struggle with this issue. And we've talked about this before in the past, but I'll just kind of run right through what I mean by riches and niches and where I see the problem and what the solution is. But if you try to be all things to all people, you'll end up being nothing to no one. And you've heard that before, but what does that mean in your business? And we talk about this idea of getting narrower and narrower and narrower in your niche or in the demographic or the target market that you're trying to reach in the specific part of the industry that you work in. And let's just take real estate, for example. So instead of, you know, doing all things, representing buyers, representing sellers, you know, all areas of your city or town, all types of homes, maybe you even do some rentals. And, and if anybody needs something real estate related, man, you'll, you'll do whatever they need. It's getting extremely narrow in your area of expertise. And the only way that you can really have an area of expertise is by getting narrow in what you do. And so think about getting narrow and then go probably four five, six layers deeper than what you're thinking when you say narrow. So is it you sell on the east side of town? Is it you sell on this specific area of the east side of town? And then is it you only sell houses that are between this price and this price, 200 to $300,000 homes in this particular area on the east side of town? Is it you only sell houses that are from 200 to $300,000 that are one story ranch homes in this particular area of the east side of, of town? Or is it that you only sell to first time home buyers, 200 to 300,000 ranch style homes in this particular area on the east side of town and get narrower and narrower and narrower. And by doing so, you can build out all of your systems. You can build out all the things that you do in your sales process to only cater to that particular person. You can learn to speak their language. You can learn to do things that benefit them, that serve them, that get them to a buying decision quicker. And really it's the ultimate form of respect in speaking their language. So the way I want to address this 2.0 or this part two of the conversation is for those of you that let's say you have done that, or let's say that you're going to do that, but you got so narrow that you feel like, well, there's not enough opportunity within that narrow of a niche in my particular market. 
Here's the idea, the new idea that I wanted to propose to you on this New Year's episode of the Sales Wolves podcast. What if you were to get extremely narrow? And let's use this as an example because I think this will be one that that will be easy to play out. But let's say it's selling to uh, veterans and specifically people that are just coming out of the military and are looking for a home in a particular part of town. If you become the absolute expert for helping veterans that are exiting the military find a home, not only will you be able to serve those people to the best of your ability, not only will you be able to serve them in a way that no other real estate agent in town could serve them, but here's the part that I want to really expand your mind on. If you feel like that potential market may have a cap on it, what if there's a second level or a second area that you could then go into and that could then provide future income, future influence, future opportunities? Well, what would that be? Well, if you do what I'm telling you to do and you become an absolute expert with that group of people, then guess what? Let's just play this example out. How many military bases are there in the United States? A lot. How many real estate agents are there in areas of the country where there's a military base? A whole lot. Well, what if now you could begin teaching, coaching, empowering other agents in other markets to do the exact same thing as you? Could you build out a course? Could you build out some type of online presence to be able to coach those particular agents on that exact expertise, which you now have? Could you speak at conferences in real estate? Could you speak at conferences that are military based, you know, veteran ran conferences? Could you provide a secondary income by coaching real estate agents on how to do what you did outside of serving those getting out of the military that are looking for their own narrow niche to serve? So if you start thinking broader, if you start thinking bigger beyond just your local area, number one, maximizing the opportunity that's in your current area. But then once you feel like you're doing a good job of that, how many other people want to be able to do the same thing in their area, specifically in this example, because someone that chooses that niche, someone that chooses to only work with people coming out of the military probably has a deep passion for veterans, for people that have served this country. Guess what? There are other real estate agents that share that passion, but may not know how to change, how to turn that passion into income, how to turn that passion into a career that would be extremely profitable, but more importantly, it would be impactful and it would be fulfilling for them. Do you not think that they would be willing to pay for that type of advice, to be able to pay for that type of coaching, to be able to pay for you to give them the blueprint that you've now used to go and build an incredible, fulfilling, and also financially rewarding and successful business? Do you not think that that would be something that they would be interested in? Of course they would. So riches and niches, we know that to be true, but let's start looking outside of just the actual business that you're doing within that niche and start looking at how we can help other people in other areas of the country, maybe even other areas of the world, be able to master that very same niche and then being able to master their own niche by the way that you mastered yours. You got to start thinking outside the box because that's the one excuse that I always hear when it comes to getting narrower and narrower and narrower. There's this scarcity mentality of feeling like, well, I'm just eliminating potential clients. I'm eliminating potential customers. I'm eliminating potential people that I could help provide my service to. Again, it's all about becoming an absolute expert at what you do. When any conversation comes up at a dinner, at a party, where you find out, oh, 
your brother's getting out of the military next year, man, you need to make sure that they talk to Sarah because Sarah is the absolute best real estate agent serving those that are getting out of the military. You got to talk to Sarah because she's an expert in it. There is absolute power at being the, at, on the tip of the tongue of anyone that that conversation comes up with. And then once you have done that, teaching others to do the same so that, yes, especially those in real estate are always talking about multiple streams of income. You can have multiple streams of income by doing what you do at a very high level and then teaching other people to do the same thing. It may be that you create your own real estate agency that only serves that particular group of people and has agents all over the country, maybe all over the world doing the exact same thing. And you build these systems out to build a huge team of people that are all committed to that one mission. And insert any other person into this equation other than military, it could be anything. Teachers, I only sell houses between a hundred and $200,000 in this particular area of town to teachers. Conversation comes up. Oh, you teach at such and such academy. Great. And you're looking for a house. Oh man, you have to talk to Bob because Bob is the best real estate agent for teachers specifically on that part of town. And guess what? There's a million teachers in the U S that are looking for houses and real estate agents that would love to be able to sell houses to them. And if you figure out the best way to do that, then you can teach them how to do that. And you can make an additional stream of income in the process. So as you look at this idea of riches and niches, if you, as you look at this idea of becoming an expert in a very, very narrow field, don't limit yourself to just that field. Realize the power and the knowledge that you have of being an expert in that field and how many other people that there are around the country that would love to share that level of expertise and to be able to use it to build their business. They win, you win, the customer wins because they have someone that does this just for that person all the time. It's a win, win, win. And I really think if you take a look at your business and look at the area of expertise that you have and start broadening your, your horizon, start broadening your mindset to how many other people would want to share in that process, you'd be amazed of the opportunities that could come for you in 2020. So that's it. Episode 150, a new way of thinking of riches and niches, part two, 2.0, whatever we want to call it, go out and do it with that. This is Tyler Jack Harris. This is the sales wolves podcast, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!